uh, Don Fisher with us. Um, Don, you're up closer to Indianapolis. Uh, they're just south. Uh, someone told me it was snowing to beat the band yesterday. And I looked out. I'm like, man, it's not here at all. It's just a little rain, and we're not that far away. But did you get some snow yesterday? Oh, yeah. It snowed. Uh, I was on my way to church at uh, about quarter to eight yesterday morning, and the snow was coming down. And by the time I got out of church, my windows were covered. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, it was not cold enough for it to hang around very long, but it was on the ground for a few minutes and it was on my back porch and yeah, it snowed. It's crazy because geographically we're not that far South, but we didn't see a lick of it. Thank goodness. But I'm sure that won't be long. Uh, <laughs> talking about the up and downs, uh, the, the, the good and the bad and the ugly of, uh, Indiana this, uh, uh, over the weekend, uh, we'll talk about all of it. Uh, let's, we might as well get to the bad and the ugly. Right now, that's uh, IU football. Uh, of course, losing to Rutgers over the weekend and kind of a rock bottom scenario, as Zach called it and the uh, accurately called it in the Indy Star. And it's kind of what it is. They've gone from not the mountaintop, but certainly heading towards that and have just kind of been knocked down off of that, Don, and back down to the abyss. Well, I, I don't know what to say, uh, to be quite honest about it, because I, I've seen this picture before at in Indiana uh, under other coaches uh, throughout the years. Uh, having done it as long as I have, <laughs> we've had a lot of disappointing seasons uh, in my time. Uh, maybe it's me. Maybe I ought to quit. I, I don't know. But uh, I, I've heard some people suggest that. But <laughs> at the same time, this, this is so – you know, the, the biggest problem with this season has been the expectations. The expectations that Indiana was going to do something special this year because of last year's success, going to a, 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 a bowl game, that uh, a Florida bowl game that no, Indiana had never been to. Um, there was so much excitement with the entire uh, fan base coming back, uh, with all the players that were coming back on this Indiana football team. Uh, the experience, the level of uh, competitiveness that this team showed a year ago, um, and now you're two and eight, and you haven't been able to beat anybody of significance. Uh, Western Kentucky was a, a decent ball club, but again, certainly not a Power Five type school. And Idaho was awful. Um, and, and everybody else that you played, you played competitively early on for the most part. Uh, certainly, they had a chance to beat a, a very highly regarded Cincinnati team. They had a chance to knock off a Michigan State team. They, they had both those games in their grasp, but they play like they are capable of playing. Uh, couldn't finish the job. And everybody else now is starting to pound Indiana. And why is that happening? And nobody, I mean, I don't think, I don't want to say this team has quit, but it looks like they have. And, and that's the problem. Uh, Saturday was just uh, atrocious. Uh, you fumble the first play from scrimmage and give Rutgers two, uh, you know, a touchdown and two plays after that. Um, you, you have six turnovers in the ball game. You have two fourth down plays that turn the ball over in good field position for the opposition again. Uh, you get beat thirty-eight to three by our football team that's not as good as your team, and and yeah. Rutgers is just a very average football team at best. All you've got to do is go out there and play your game, and you've got a shot. Uh, and Indiana didn't play the way they're capable of playing in this contest. And the only thing you could say is these guys have lost faith or confidence or belief that they can beat people. And I don't, I don't know how else you put it. And I'm not trying to disparage the coaching staff. I'm not trying to disparage individual players. It's just a fact of life. I mean, we're – it's hard to dis, it's hard to to say something other than what you see on the field right now. And what we're seeing is a football team that is in a big time struggle with their mentality, uh, a big time struggle with the physical play that they need to play with. Uh, I, I actually thought the defense, you know, kind of hung in there Saturday as best they could under the circumstances with what the offense was doing to field position and giving the other team every opportunity to beat them. Yeah, and that's not the first time this year that the defense has been putting put in a, a lot of tough situations. And a lot of times the defense has carried the team, like you said, and uh, they just – I, I hate to say anyone's ever quit, but you it's the eye test. And 
you just look and say, man, the effort is just not there, especially when you lose to a team that had only scored 20 points was their high point, and they nearly double that against Indiana. Um, and now you've got two games left that you have to worry about, a home game against Minnesota, and then you got to go on a road to a team that is kind of trending up, and it's a rival game, and they're probably looking – there was nothing they loved more than to pound Indiana on their last game on the way out to a bowl game this year. Absolutely. That that's that's what you've got to look forward to. So the question is, can you turn this thing around where you're competitive again? Because they weren't competitive Saturday. I mean, you, just, you how can you say anything else? They were not competitive. And when you're not competitive, uh, you, uh, you it, it's not it's first of all it's not fun to watch. And with with all the expectations that we've had this year, it just doubles the disappointment in what we're seeing right now. Yeah, and then uh, Renata mentions you start having situations like Devin Matthews and Peyton Hendershot apparently getting into a little tussle, and that stuff happens all the time with sure. any teams. But when you know when it, when it happens at this point, it's kind of like the basketball season last year. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, I think Christian Lander, there was just some issues with guys. And, you know, when that stuff starts happening, it's usually the result of of just uh, things that have just built up. And I think that that's what, what is going on with Indiana right now. Well, and, and when you have that, whatever confrontation took place on Saturday on the sideline, it gets magnified because of the frustration that's going on with this football team and with the struggles that are taking place on the field. It gets magnified. And so people are, and everybody's taking shots. And that's just, that's the way it is. And you've got to understand that. And basically turn off your social media if you don't want to take shots, because uh, you're that's all you're going to get at this point in the season, especially under these circumstances. Uh, well, we can move on to something more positive uh, and talk about basketball. I forgot to mention Charlie's not with us because he's filling in as a phys ed teacher for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so he's teaching today. Uh, he la- was laughing when he was telling me about it. He goes, I don't know how I got roped into this. We got, I, I was doing it as a favor. So he's going to be teaching. So that's why he's not with us today. Well, uh, good but he'll be, he'll be with us the next couple of weeks, though. But uh, on the basketball side of things, man, a, a difference between the first game and the second game uh, was resounding. The effort, uh, Trace Jackson Davis. He looked like a man on a mission from the word go. Um, there were a lot of guys. I mean, I could go through a roster of guys that did things differently and more. And just the team looked so much better. Of course, when you hit shots, Don, that makes everything look better. And they did. They they hit a lot. The, the shooting was better. The shot selection was better. There were times when I think they uh, maybe have forced a few things. But and there's some things we'll talk about. Uh, Parker Stewart being one of those. But other than that, it's just a lot of positive things. This team is learning and getting better as they go. Well, to me, the very first half, the first half of the Eastern Michigan game, I thought was special. I I, I really thought Indiana played extremely well the first half of that ball game. Uh, they took Eastern Michigan out of everything they wanted to do from a defensive standpoint. I'm talking about Eastern Mi- or Indiana's defense was what took Mi- Eastern Michigan out of what they wanted to do offensively. Uh, and then the offense, I thought, looked sharp. I, I, I really thought they played well. Parker Stewart did knock down the first two threes of the ball game for Indiana in that contest. And then the second half, uh, after the the you know initial two minutes of the ball game where they built a 21 point lead, it was I think 17 at halftime. Um, all of a sudden, everybody starts standing around, and and it was the, the offense got totally stagnant. Uh, the defense still hung in there to some degree, and and without question, I think they played hard. But defensively, or or when a, a, another team gets a guy that the yeah, Noah Farrakhan can flat shoot it, and this kid from Eastern Michigan started hitting shots, and hot. so he got hot. And, and everything he threw up there went down. We've seen that with guys like uh, the kid from Iowa, the, the uh, short guard from Iowa. Uh, no, 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 no. The other oh, kid, uh, Bohannon. Bohannon. Yes, Bohannon. Yeah, it's been there for 18 years. Exactly. And still there. Uh, and and that guy, when he gets hot, I mean, he just gets on a roll. It doesn't matter what he uh, what kind of shot he takes, it goes in. And that's kind of what happened with Farrakhan in this ball game. But Indiana's offense got stagnant. The offense didn't do the same things, and they started standing around. And so it looked, 
it was deja vu is what is the term I use because that's what it looked like last year. That's how Indiana looked at the end of the season play, playing offense and uh, standing around and waiting for something to happen and nobody making it happen. So, th But they made the plays at the end that were critical and, and they won the ball game. And Mike was happy about making the plays at the end. He says, we got work to do you know, to, from an offensive standpoint. They come back the next ball game against Northern Illinois, a team that had just knocked off Washington on the road, uh, a bit Pac-12 team. Uh, and Northern is a ball club that is kind of fitting all the pieces together, too, under a first-year coach. Uh, and Indiana absolutely destroyed them. From the very beginning of the ball game to the very end of the contest, it was no contest. Northern Illinois couldn't do anything against IU, and it was really, really special. So the, the truth of the matter is what we saw on Friday night, I think, is what we're going to see a lot more of throughout this season. And I think everybody is excited about that because this defense right now um, is, is, is special. And I say that because of how hard they play and the, and the transition of these guys in switching – uh, the man-to-man -man switching that they're doing right now, I think, is special. I've always wondered why there wasn't more switching by Indiana basketball teams in the past because that's uh, the way the game is played right now, the speed with which it's, which it's played, and the strength and the athleticism of players these days, switching is an, an absolute necessity in my mind. And uh, all of a sudden, that's what we're seeing. And Mike Woodson has his – Philosophy on defense, it is strictly man-to-man, -man, but it's a switching man-to-man, -man, and I love it. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I really am. I, everything I saw on Friday night told me that what we have expected to see from this Indiana basketball team is what we're going to see. Yeah, I, I agree with you. They just looked uh, completely different as they did not stop playing. They played basically for 40 minutes against Northern Illinois, and that was the difference. They, there was no standing around. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis was one of those who played the entire time. Race Thompson, um, I, I, I just raved about. I love his workman. He's a blue collar. Uh, I call him a blue collar baller. He, he's just, that's what he does. He's always around the basket where he's tipping, getting a rebound, drawing a foul. Um, and, and to have that, he, he got a, he had a double, double. And to have a guy who is kind of your off, I don't want to call him an off player, but he's not the featured player. Right. But when you've got a non featured player pulling down double doubles, that's going to, you're going to win a lot of games. And uh, the shooting was so much better. And I think better shot selection took was part of that. Um, Miller Cop and Parker Stewart still searching. I guess I, I think Miller Cop is going to be a guy that is just always there for this team. And when they need him, he's probably going to have a big game. Parker Stewart uh, still looking to get more shots. I think from him, uh, he's probably the best three point shooter on the team. But uh, I think everyone's still looking to find their role. But the offense looked so much more in sync uh, than it did the previous game. Well, and a big part of that uh, are the two point guards. Uh, Xavier Johnson was terrific in this ball game against Northern, uh, 13 points, but his, his playmaking ability, uh, his quickness, his strength as a guard. And Rob Finnessy's always been one of the strongest guys on this basketball team through his years at Indiana. Even when he wasn't playing his best basketball, you could always count on him playing uh, at, at a very high level on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, he, 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 I think these two guys complement them, complement each other. I think they, they both have a role in this basketball team that's critical. Um, I, I just liked everything I saw about Friday night. I can just tell you that. And I think it's going to be uh, increasingly important for Miller Cop and for uh, Parker Stewart to continue to progress and they're they're feeling their way too. They're on a new basketball team with the with several players that are new to this program. Uh, they're all trying to figure out their roles. Uh, it'll come, uh, and it's not. It doesn't ever always come at once. And if it does, it's rare. So I, I think everybody's got to figure it out. I think they will figure it out. Uh, Parker Stewart is the best shooter on this basketball team. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, and he's going to find his role and how he fits in. And when he starts playing like or shooting the basketball like he's capable, it's going to be fun to watch because he can flat shoot. The Absolutely. And uh, a little change in the coaches show this week. Tonight, 
Uh, Coach Woodson's show is still at uh, 7.05 at Southern Stone Restaurant. You'll be there with that. But you have a game on Wednesday. Uh, so the game, uh, Indiana's game on Wednesday takes precedence. And then you'll have Coach Allen back at Southern Stone on Thursday for his show, I believe. Correct? Yep, that is correct. Uh, it's a busy week again, <laughs> as all, yes. game, all weeks in November are, uh, with both football and basketball ongoing and both coaches' shows going on and, and games going on. So it, it's another busy week. It's going to be fun, though, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, there's no question that uh, this this time of year is always like this is. It's very chaotic. At the same time, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. St. John's coming up on Wednesday, too. So another test or, or probably the truest test they've had this season. Yep. Uh, they're coached by Mike Anderson, who's a terrific basketball coach. Uh, been around the block with Indiana saw him twice back in 2019. Uh, early in the season, Indiana lost to him by a point down in uh, uh, Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas. And then they beat them in the NIT that year which got uh, Coach Anderson fired, apparently. <laughs> got, that's when he was let go. Uh, and uh, now he's been at St. John's for the last three years, and he's revamped that program. And there's no question, this is going to be a challenge. They've got a heck of a player in Champagny, who is a terrific scorer. Uh, and Posh Alexander is another kid that's really, really good in this basketball team. Uh, and my friend John Minko, who worked for me for seven years back in the day, does their play-by-play. -play. We talked last night, and he says they're a good ball club. It's going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to hearing you on the call. Uh, I know that they everyone's happy that it won't be on BTN again, uh, but uh, we'll talk about that next week. Don Fisher, <laughs> the great the voice of the Hoosiers. Thank you, sir. I can't thank you enough. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Appreciate you having me.